Welcome to the next lecture of the module data dimension and in this lecture I'll be talking about TSNE. So TSNE is one more technique where you can reduce the dimensions of your data so as to visualize and get to know about the hypothesis you can use over that data or how that data is varying with respect to the parameter. So it is basically a technique to reduce your data, right? So what exactly TSNE is? TSNE stands for T Distributed Stochastic Neighbor Embedding, right? It's an unsupervised nonlinear technique. By nonlinear, I mean to say that the equation it forms is, is nonlinear. That is, you can you may not have a linear line when you are distributing your data. Why it it is important to for it to having a nonlinear technique? It's because we have to visualize a high dimensional data in different dimensions and we have to re reduce that high dimensions to a lower dimensions as per our choices right so the intuition behind the working of tsne is that we want to see that how the data is arranged in a high dimensional space so for having that visualization we we fit our data to a lower dimensions right it preserves only the small pairwise distance between the data points it has it basically calculates a similarity measure between the pair of instances. By pair of instances, I mean that if you are given some parameter, say you are given six parameters and then you have to predict another parameter, right? So using that six features or that six parameter, you prepare an instance and then you find out the differences between or the distance between the two instances and see that to which pair it will belong to or what will be the final outcome for that instance. So it calculates a similarity measure between a pair of instances in a high dimensional space and in the low dimensional space. And then it tries to optimize these two similarity measures using a cost functions. You don't go deep into the math behind TSNE because it's, it's little bit complicated. For this course, you just need to understand that how you can bring your high dimensional data to a lower dimension so as to be clear about the data you are having. So understanding all these concepts, let's move on with our code. So I have used the libraries manifold. This is the module where you have your TSNE. So I am importing TSNE from that. Again, I am telling TSNE stands for T distributed stochastic neighbor embedding, right? So I'm, I have loaded my libraries and then the data we have so we are using a banknote data okay let me show you the data we have so that's the that's our data we have four features with us and then we are predicting the class to which it belongs to right so this was a kind of data where we were checking that whether this note this banknote is duplicate or an original one right so whether it's real or it's a fake money so the class represents real or fake money Okay, so let me show you the data, uh, the labels we have in class param column. So class dot unique. Okay, so we have two labels, zero or one. Zero means the fake currency, and one means the real one. Okay, let me show you the data in as well. So uh, we have around thirteen hundred seventy-two entries with us. Now, what we want is we want to visualize our data but for visualization we have to go for four dimensions right but we have but but uh, but our target is to visualize our 4d data to a two dimensional space right and that two dimensional also with one dimension as the outcome and these all input in one dimension so we have to convert four dimensions to one dimension for doing so TSNE works over here. It calculates the distance similarity measures and then between the high dimensional space and low dimensional space and then use the cost function to plot these four dimensional intuition, these four dimensional parameters to a single dimension, right? So this is how powerful TSNE is. It makes our work very easy. So let me show you. We'll separate out the features and the target column we have. So features we have is the image dot where okay then 
image dot skew column right then image dot curt don't worry about the parameters that we have you need not to understand the parameters you just focus on how tsne works okay so these are the four parameters in our input and the target output we have is target okay so it's the class column right so we have prepared now what we have to do is we have to scale our data because the data dimensions we have or the range of the values in each parameter is different so to as i have explained before to make our model unbiased we have to scale our data for a uniform distribution okay so what we'll do is let me name it a data norm that is normalized data so we'll copy our data to it because we'll keep with us the original data as well so we will say now we initialize the standard scalar we have so standard scalar okay and then what we have to do is we have to fit our data to the standard scalar and we have to uh, transform our data so data norm and we have to play with the features only so data norm features features right equals to standard scalar dot fit what we have to fit is we have to fit the data that is the data features the original data we will take the features only so features and then we have to transform it also so we can do it along with this part so also transform it and then transform what transform data features so first we have fitted our data over the data features then we have transformed the data and the transform data will then go to the data norm features okay now what we have to do is we have to plot our tsne so for that we have to initialize the tsne model it's a supervised learning model so we have to initialize it so let's name it a tsne only so tsne equals to initializing the tsne model that we have loaded above then we have to set the learning rate as we are doing in our machine learning models you can take example of uh, linear regression as in that case we have also used a learning rate so in this case let's set our learning rate to be 500 okay and the number of components we want so i want two dimensional i want to convert my data to a two dimensional space so number of components i want i want two components so number of components components equals to two okay and then we have to transform our data so let's name the data as xtne because that's the feature data we have so xtne then tsne dot fit transform now we have to fit transform our data norm features right this will be the input so that's why xtne and similarly we'll prepare the y tsne that is the output so y tsne equals to data and the normal targets that we have to predict so the output column data targets right so it will take some time yeah it's ready now so we have our input xtne and the output is y tsne so xtsne is now being converted to a single uh, a uniform data and when we basically this data norm features was the scale data it has all the four parameters but those were scaled now when we fit transform our data using tsne it has converted that four dimensional data to a single dimension and now we have two dimensions with us that is x data and y data and we'll be plotting an x y correlation to see the two dimensional plotting of our data okay so this is how easy it is so for visualization we will use matplotlib so plt dot figure let me set the size of the figure so figure size equals to let's say Sixteen by eleven, okay, and then plt dot scatter. And what we have to plot is we have to plot x tsne and the y tsne. So we'll say x tsne and np dot where 
y equal equal to zero plotting it with the zero okay and then x tsne np dot where y equal equal to zero with respect to one and okay sorry right and then color equals to green uh, let's set the marker also so marker b star okay so marker b star and again copying this okay so xtne where this y value equals to 1 with respect to 0 and where y value is equals to 1 plotted with 1 okay so let me just explain you what what we are doing over here so initially we were having the xtsne so pd dot let's say uh, let me show you pd dot data frame so what data we are talking about we are talking about xtsne right so xtsne so this data was having zero and one dimensions right so these are the two dimension and these were rest of the total entries we have right so 172 entries two columns now what we are doing is we are basically plotting the data all the all the data 0 with respect to 0 1 with respect to 1 0 with respect to 1 and then 1 with respect to 1 so that's what we are doing over here that's how we are scattering our data also if we say let's say plt dot x label and set the data dimension as dimension 1 and then y label as dimension 2 okay and then let's title it as the tsne graph so t s any now plt dot show okay so now you can see okay i have i have done a mistake uh, the markers are same and colors are same let's change it okay so now you can see that's the graph we are finding out from this data so we have basically converted a four dimensional data to a two dimensional data we are plotting our data xtsne with respect to y and it's taking each column with respect to the class of y each time okay so what we are doing is we are plotting xtsne data where y equals to zero and the data is zero and similarly where the data was zero and the label was one so we are doing all the pairing and then scattering using the scattered graph we are plotting that data over here so now you can see that this is the data we have this is how we can visualize our data you can see that in high dimensional space our data can be easily be separated out using any hypothesis if we are using a linear hypothesis you can you can think about it as in a high dimensional space it's just an intuition for you to visualize how your data is plotted and how your hypothesis can work for example if you will be having a red uh, these red marks over here also then in that case to separate out this green data you have to use a ellipse so you can have an idea of how your hypothesis work and how your model can be used for such kind of data okay so this is how we use tsne this was all for this lecture this is how we convert a high dimensional data to a low dimensional space so as to visualize that data and to have an intuition that how I, our hypothesis will work and what kind of model we can use to train over this data right so this was all for this lecture thanks for watching this video and keep following